Well, it's been a busy week here in Washington with new developments and several scandals and the president announcing a major shift in the war on terror. Join, joining us to talk about all of it is the number two Democrat in the Senate, Dick Durbin, who's in Springfield, Illinois, and Republican Senator Lindsey Graham from Columbia, South Carolina. Senators, I want to start with the Justice Department targeting reporters and national security leaks. Here is what Attorney General Holder told a congressional committee a few days ago. The focus should be on those people who break their oaths and put the American people um, at risk, not reporters who uh, gather this information. That should not be the focus of these, of the, of these investigations. But it turns out that Holder signed off on an affidavit for a search warrant in one leaked case, and I want to bring that up with you. Here's what uh, that affidavit said. There is probable cause to believe the reporter, in this case Fox News' is James Rosen, has committed a violation of the Espionage Act, either as an aider, a better, and or co-conspirator. And yet, Senator Graham, despite that clear contradiction between what Holder said and what he actually did, President Obama is asking the Attorney General to investigate his own actions. Well, this would be a good time to have a special counsel come forward or some independent group to look at it. James Rosen is a lot of things, but a criminal co-conspirator conspirator he is not. We're beginning to criminalize uh, journalism, and I think that should worry us all. But having said that, when classified information is leaked out in the public that they can put our operations or American operatives in harm's way, we've got to find a way to pursue that too. But this is clearly an overreach. Uh, Senator Durbin, how can we expect uh, Attorney General Holder to honestly review what in effect are his own actions. Isn't that by definition a conflict of interest? Well, it's interesting that the Attorney General recused himself from the other case involving Associated Press because he believed there was some conflict inherent. And it may raise the same question in this case. But let's not forget, Chris, on Memorial Day weekend, what this is really all about. It is a question of classified information. Uh, someone working for our government on our side violated their oath and disclosed that information to the press. And it happens with some frequency, I might add. But having done that, what is the government to do? If, in fact, that disclosure could endanger our military forces or those who are cooperating with us to fight terrorism, it is a constant tension between the government and our freedoms under the civil right, under the Bill of Rights uh, that we see playing out in both the Associated Press case and this Fox case. But you talk about Memorial Day weekend. It's also about the First Amendment and the role, the very important yes, role that the media play. Honestly, are you comfortable with the idea that the president has asked the attorney general to review the attorney general's own actions. Well, you, you've raised an important point, and I heard Senator Graham call for special counsel. I'm not ready to do this at this moment. I'd like to know if Holder uh, has any conflict in here beyond what we've heard uh, when it comes to the Fox case. But, but here's the bottom line. The media shield law, which uh, I am prepared to support, and I know Senator Graham supports, still leaves an unanswered question, which I've raised many times. What is a journalist today in 2013? We know it's someone who works for Fox or AP, but does it include a blogger? Does it include someone who's tweeting? Are these people journalists and entitled to constitutional protection? We need to ask 21st century questions about a provision in our Constitution that was written over 200 years ago. Gentlemen, let's turn to the IRS scandal. As I said, we got a lot of ground to cover here. Uh, Senator Graham, you say that President Obama may not have directly ordered the IRS to target conservative groups, but that there was a culture of political manipulation that filtered down from the White House. Explain what you mean. Well, I think the, the president has uh, basically told some of his supporters, you know, uh, the best way to get back at somebody is, is to win, sort of talking about revenge, this, uh, you know, take no prisoners attitude. There's clearly an organized effort within the IRS to target political opponents of the president. That's undeniable. How does such a culture come about? How vast was it? Who was involved? This really does call for a special counsel. The DOJ guidelines about dealing with uh, journalist leaks or leaks of classified information goes back to the 70s. We need to review that. But my belief about the IRS scandal is that this culture of going after Tea Party groups that were, you know, on the president's case about Obamacare uh, did 
did just not accidentally happen. I think it comes from the top in terms of tone. Senator Durbin, I want to pick up on this culture. Uh, starting in 2010, a number of Democratic senators, Democratic senators sent letters to the IRS asking them to investigate various groups that they said were seeking tax exempt status but were improperly involved in politics. Now, in October of 2010, you sent a letter to the IRS in yes, which you talked about going after groups. But you only mentioned one specifically by name, and I want to put up this from the October 2010 letter that you wrote to the IRS. One organization whose activities appear to be inconsistent with its tax status is Crossroads GPS. That, of course, the group co-founded by Carl Rove. Question, Senator, why single out Crossroads when you didn't mention a single liberal group, and there were a bunch that were applying for tax-exempt status that, at exactly that point, with the name Progress in their names? I could just... I can just tell you flat out why I did it, because that Crossroads organization was boasting about how much money they were raising as a 501c4. Let's get back to the basics. Citizens United really unleashed hundreds if not thousands of organizations seeking tax-exempt status to play in political campaigns. The law we wrote as Congress said that they had to exclusively be engaged in social welfare and not politics and campaigning. And so here is the IRS trying to decide whether or not these organizations uh, really comply with the law. Crossroads was Exhibit A. They were boastful about how much but, but, money but they Senator were going to raise and beat I, Democrats. But Senator Durbin, just briefly, why not, because we, we're now in the mess that we're in because of political targeting, why not send a letter that says go after any group of any political persuasion? Why not uh, refrain from singling out a conservative group and never mention any liberal groups? Well, I explained that once, Chris, but, you know, Karl Rove was making these boasts and saying he was going to raise so much money, millions of dollars. And I knew that if they went in to investigate this group, every other group would be put on notice. I've also said from the beginning, Chris, there is no basis for targeting within the IRS. Uh, what we basically need to say is all groups need to have the law applied to them equally. And in this situation, Karl Rove was front and center and proud of it. And that's why I mentioned his organization. All right, uh, let's talk about the president's big speech this week in which he said that we are entering a new phase in the war on terror. Take a look at the president's comments. Now beyond Afghanistan, we must define our effort not as a boundless global war on terror, but rather as a series of persistent targeted efforts to dismantle specific networks of violent extremists that threaten America. Uh, Senator Durbin, the president said wars must end, but the fact is the Cold War lasted for 40 years. Isn't there a danger of declaring an end to this war too soon? You know, James Madison was quoted by the president. He basically said, if you want to preserve freedom, it's difficult to do if you have a continuous war. What the president is saying to us... Would you have said that during the Cold War, sir? Well, I can tell you that we had to stop and think many times during the Cold War. Can I go back to the McCarthy era and talk about the witch hunts for those who were thought to be communists? You just find in a warlike atmosphere that you end up compromising some basic values and basic freedoms and liberties. That's what the president reminded us. Now, I'm, I'm not going to take uh, lightly the terrorism threat against the United States, but if we are constantly thinking, this, uh, thinking of this in the context of war, we stand the very real risk of doing things which compromise our values and freedoms. Uh, Senator Graham, what is your biggest practical worry about the president saying that we are in a new phase and in some sense uh, laying out an exit strategy for the global war on terror? At a time we need resolve the most, we're sounding retreat. Our enemies are emboldened all over the planet. Al-Qaeda in Iraq is coming back with vengeance. In Libya, you saw Al-Qaeda groups in Yemen and Libya working together. Our friends are uncertain. Syria is falling apart. We're talking about helping the rebels, but doing nothing about it. Iran is marching toward a nuclear weapon. The challenge of our time is to keep weapons of mass destruction out of the hands of radical Islamists, and we're failing in my view. Syria is about to fall apart. The chemical weapons there are enough to kill thousands, if not millions of Americans can be compromised. Israel is very threatened by what's happening in Syria. Uh, Iran is marching toward a nuclear weapon, and we show this lack of resolve, talking about the war being over. What do you think the Iranians are thinking? Uh, at the end of the day, this is the most tone-deaf president I've ever 
could imagine of making such a speech at a time when our homeland is uh, trying to be attacked literally every day, changing the standards of when you can uh, go after somebody with a drone. It has to be a continuing imminent threat to uh, the American people with no chance of civilian casualties, virtually no right. chance of civilian casualties. I think we're diminishing our national security infrastructure. Sequestration is dismantling the military at a time we need it the most. I've never seen, I've never been more worried about our national security than I am right now, and this speech did not help. Gentlemen, we got about a minute left. I'm going to ask you to uh, play well with others, as they say, in kindergarten and share the time equally. Uh, the President and Defense Secretary Hagel both this week went to service academies, Annapolis and West Point, and spoke about the, the really serious problem of sexual assault inside the military. And a Pentagon study that is just out estimates that 26,000 members of the armed forces face sexual assault last year, 26,000 members specifically. Each of you, 30 seconds, start with you, Senator Durbin. What can and should Congress do to try to get a, a handle on and stop this problem? Well, there are several things we need to do, but I want to salute the women of the Senate, both Democrats and Republicans, who are stepping up on this issue in, in a determined effort to stop what uh, is truly a scourge on the military. We need to make certain that those who are victims step forward knowing they'll be protected and have a chance to have their day in court, a court that they can trust. We need to make a new culture when it comes to the command structure within the military so that this is unacceptable, intolerable, and those who are engaged in it will pay a price. Said, uh, I think we understand the future of the military is a military with both men and women in leadership. Senator Graham. I want to salute the women who serve and are putting up with way too much crap. This needs to end. Uh, when a victim comes forward, they should have an advocate to walk them through the military justice system. And commanders who allow this to continue to, to flourish, quite frankly, should be fired. And uh, the president spoke well of this problem. It is a disgrace to the United States military. And the women in our military are needed now more than ever. And they're putting up with way too much. And it needs to end. Senator Graham, Senator Durbin, we want to thank you both for coming in and joining us on this Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.